brought to you by Majestic's Car Club. Join us for our annual Run to the Oasis Rod Run and Moose Jaw, August 26th to 28th, with door prizes, hotels, camping, and of course, special interest vehicles. There's something for everyone. For more information, visit MajesticsCarClub.com. Jim Leskin, and it's the Saskatchewan Ford Mercury Club. I got that right? Yes, you did. I like your, uh, hey, look at that there. Wow, pretty cool there. Uh, and you're called Baby Blue. That's my car. <laughs> a 1970 Grabber Blue Mustang Fastback. Well, let's have a look. Let's just stand back here for a sec, Jim. Wow, this is beautiful. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hang on, let me come around this side so we can hear what you're saying. So that we've talked about this car a few times, so we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but you had this since you were a kid, didn't you? Yeah, got it a month before my 16th birthday, April of 1980. Oh my goodness, April of 1980. And then the color is called again? Grabber Blue. And you call it Baby Blue on your shirt there. Yes, I've also heard a cotton candy colored car as well. <laughs> Fantastic. So we want to talk a little bit about what today is because you've got a big day going on here with JDRF. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing today, Jim. And who are you in the club, your position? I'm the secretary treasurer of the club and JDRF. Um, Ford has typically supported Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and our club uh, several years ago adopted them as our charity of choice. Every year we uh, take the proceeds of our year uh, prior, prior and uh, donate them over to Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. This year we'll be making a donation of $3,000. 3K, wow. Yes, we do a little bit of fundraising throughout the year. Of course, all the proceeds that are in excess, in excess of our expenses for the car shows is donated to them. Uh, I organize a steak night usually around Valentine's Day and invite JDRF to come out as well they do some fundraising there but also the proceeds from our ticket sales goes to them and uh, yeah generally we uh, have fun raising funds for them and uh, typically we in the past we've given them to them at a one of our club meetings usually in April but uh, it's usually not publicly displayed and this year we thought with uh, a beautiful weather here today that we would donate it in front of hopefully hundreds of uh, participants that's very cool. I, I like the idea that, you know, a lot of people don't think that, uh, realize that a lot of car clubs really, it's not just about uh, themselves, it's about the community, and that's what you're showing here is with this donation with JDRF. That's true, yeah. Uh, these poor little guys, in fact, on my little bay, I've had two children on my bay of uh, 20 houses that have been uh, afflicted by the disease, and, you know, Usually they get sick, get a flu, and it wipes out their pancreas, and yeah, they're, they're burdened with this disease for the rest of their lives. Having wow. to uh, in, you know, take insulin to uh, run a normal life. Very good. So let's talk a little bit about the Saskatchewan Ford Mercury Club, some of the events that you got coming up through the rest of the summer here, Jim, and, and just hear what you guys are doing. Well, we usually typically start our year off with the uh, steak night in February. Uh, then in uh, late May, we usually do a spring uh, club run. So this year we ran out from Regina to Chamberlain, then over to Moose Jaw and had supper in Moose Jaw. That's usually just a closed club event. Uh, our club has three car shows, uh, June, July, August. They're on our website, saskfordmercury.ca. Uh, we have an informal car show every Wednesday at this location, A&W on Albert and Avonhurst. We call it Wheel In on Wednesday. So some days there's 10 cars, some days there's 30 cars. There's no entry fee for that. Uh, then towards the end of the year... So, uh, if I've got my favorite car and I want to take... Um my favorite girl out for a drive on a Wednesday, you, I, I'll be okay to come by here and hang out a little bit? Certainly, we welcome all makes and models of car. We just uh, love to have the cars out here. Brings back the nostalgia of what a was with the drive-in. Very good. Sorry, I interrupted you. You were going to tell us a little bit more there. Uh, then uh, in August, after our August car show, we make a quick run down to Parkside uh, Nursing Home and do a mini one-hour show there. And then in the fall, we do a club cruise. Uh, usually out around Echo Lake, but that again is a closed for the club members only. Our club uh, ended last year with about 90 members. Oh. And uh, vehicles ranged from a 1910 Model A 
to a 2015 Mustang GT. So, you know, we've got 85 or no, sorry, to 100 years of vehicles, I guess, yeah. in the club. Well, very good. Well, thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7, and it's a worthwhile thing that you're doing here with JDRF, and I uh, hope you guys have a good show for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Hey, who are you guys anyway? Tell us who you are. I'm Jason. This is my wife, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi. So when did you get this sweet ride here? Uh, five years ago. <laughs> five years ago. Who's in, the, who's in the wagon with you? Catherine and Dean. Can they say hello to us? Hi. Hi. How are you? Hey, hi. <laughs> hey, what did you say? Nothing. And hey, Dean, buddy, how are you doing today? Oh, a <laughs> lot, lot going on there, boy. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7. You bet. Have Take a good care. day. What's that? Yay! Yay! <laughs> We're here with Gary Monroe, and you got a 57? Yes. Baby bird here? It is. Tell us a little bit about this car, Gary. Well, uh, this car came out of the States, out of Dallas, Texas. Ah, it's um, a convertible, too. I haven't seen too many rag tops like that. Uh, they all come with a hard top and the soft top. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, Corvettes had that, too, in the 60s. Right, yeah. The soft top just drops into in behind the seat, and you can put the hard top on. But they're so hard to uh, take off and store that typically they just leave the soft top on them. And yeah, it's beautiful. That's a nice soft top. So you bought this in the States, did you? Yes, from uh, Amos Minter. Uh, Amos Minter, he's one of the, I guess, American famous T-Bird specialists. Oh, okay. Uh, his business is strictly restoring 55, 56, 57 T-Birds. Wow, he did a great job of it. It's just beautiful. And black is a beautiful color for it, too. It is just hard to keep scratches and keep it clean, but other than that, uh, it's, uh, it's a fun I, car. I had a black uh, car one time, and it, it is a lot of work on it. So why the 57 T-Bird? What, what did that for you? Uh, I guess it goes back to my youth. It, I, I've seen them around, and you see them on the TV shows back when I was younger. And, I don't know, just sort of developed a passion for I always wanted a 57. Yeah, you know, well, 57 particularly. Yeah, yeah is a 57. Is what has the 57 got that the others don't have? Well, when you look behind us, this one, uh, there's a black one there. That's a 56. The 56 okay. came with a Continental kit. That was part of their... Oh, the Continental kit. Okay. Right. So, and in 57, they took it off. Okay. And they made the trunk bigger and a few other things. Oh, uh, okay. So, just the different features of them. That's... So, you can throw in some luggage, actually, and tour a little bit. You can throw everything you want in that trunk if you saw the size, how big these is things are. Is it really? Are. These things are just amazing. Let's have a look. Let's okay. have a look. Let's see how big that trunk is. Yeah, we'll just come around this side here. So we'll open it up. There won't be a body in there or anything, huh? No, no. it's just... Well, look at that, huh? Yeah. These are just amazing. There's a full tire in there and everything. Yeah, full-size spare. Luggage, you could really tour with this. Maybe that was the idea that they thought, hey, people could start driving with these cars. <laughs> they did back in, in that time. They shouldn't uh, be touching they did. it there. Uh, uh, the people do. They packed in their suitcases and everything else, and they were gone for a couple of weeks on, on trips. So. I can see why that would make a sales thing, you know. In, in, yeah. the, in 57, you could uh, get on Route 66, and actually, those poor guys with their Corvette, on Route 66, they never have any room for their luggage. I don't know if you ever noticed. <laughs> they got it strapped on the back. Here you can actually put stuff in, huh? You could. So yes. are you planning any tours at all with it, Gary? Uh, yeah, I'm taking it down to uh, California, actually, in September. Oh, yeah. uh, the Thunderbird Club of California has a uh, convention going on down there. So they run up the coastline and they do a few things oh. and that. So that's my fault. Will you drive it the whole way, Gary? Uh, no, uh, I'll take it from Scottsdale. I'll yeah. drive it from Scottsdale over. Oh, okay. It's about a six-hour drive. Yeah, nice. Right. So this been, it's been a lot of fun for you? It is. Uh, they, they're just a fun car to work on. It's, uh, I don't know how you describe it, but it's something that you're always working on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, I guess, uh, the pleasure you have in them is, is just seeing how nice you can really make them. Oh, you know, beautiful. You never, you never quit working on it. You know? <laughs> Well, it's a labor of love. It is. Yep, truly. Any favorite stories you want to share? Um, not at this point, but maybe after I come back from California, I can probably tell a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7. Okay, thank you. So we're here with Russell Kemp. You're not the owner of this car, but you told me, who's the owner of it? Uh, Dale Hoyer, a good friend of mine. Good friend. So tell me, what did you do for Dale in this car? Well, we started off with a rust-free Oregon car with 40,000 original miles, 307 Power Glide. And we put the LS3 Corvette crate motor. I put a custom spec cam motion cam, uh, stainless steel exhaust headers. We even put high flow catalytic converter so it doesn't stink like an old car. Oh. We put an evaporative emission system because his, uh, he was complaining about gas smell in his garage. 
Uh, we put revised uh, suspension components to fix the backwards camber gain on these cars. We put the Corvette heavy-duty C4 brakes, 18-inch wheels, uh, cruise control. Uh, yeah, it's a nice cruising car. So it sounds like you have a lot of talent. Where, how did you come by all these skills here to put all this stuff in here? I've been in the mechanical business since 1975, 19 and, I own, and I own my own shop since 1983. What's your shop called? Autolab. Oh, really? That's cool. So your friend came along and you just said, hey, I'm not going to charge you a penny. I'm just going to do all this? Uh, no, we, uh, <laughs> we gave him a deal, but it was a lot of hours. A lot of hours. Yeah. So why uh, the Corvette powertrain? Just decided that was uh, just got more oomph to it or what? Well, the guy was interested in uh, the idea is to restify a car now. You take an old car and you put a modern fuel-injected powertrain. Okay. And it just made sense to put an LS3 because, I mean, they're, they're 500 horsepower. They get 25 miles a gallon on the highway. Uh, you can't beat it. So we 25 miles to the gallon. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So this is a 69 yeah. Chevelle, 68, 68 Chevelle Malibu. Malibu. Yeah. This is one of the most popular GM uh, cars in the late 60s. They yeah. usually came with a 327, 396. Some yeah. I don't know if they had a 427 in any of them. Um, I think you could, but they were very limited. Yeah, yeah. Very I limited. can remember a friend of mine had a 69. It's got the Auto Magic in it too. I see. Huh? Uh, we put the 4L60E, the automatic overdrive in it. Okay. Yeah. So this is like a, a car that could go anywhere and do anything. It's it's uh, ready to rock and roll, huh? Yeah, he takes the car shows to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Red Deer, Alberta. He wants to do the hot rod power tour, which <coughs> I think starts in Minneapolis and it goes through many states. So he wants oh. to do that this summer. So this is a real daily driver then. You can drive this car. Yeah, you set the cruise control and go. Fantastic. Yeah. So what was the most fun for you on this car? Um, oh, that's a tough question. I guess... <laughs> The finished results uh, was the best part of it. Yeah. So yeah. when it's all done, there it is, kind of thing. Huh? Did you make the choices on the, the powertrain stuff and everything? Well, I knew what my friend wanted, but he didn't know how to get there. Okay. So he he just trusted me because I've been a good friend of him for of his for 35 years. So. Oh, this is all about friendship in this car. That's right. Oh my God, bros, yeah. huh? Bros forever. Yeah. Well, I love it. Well, thanks for sharing with us this. Uh, this friendship car, You're very welcome. nice. Take care. Thank you. Very nice. Very so who have we got here? What's your name? Tanya. Tanya. And what's your name? Sky. And what's your, Sky, cool name. What's your name? Joanne. So uh, Sky, like are, are these girls that you just kind of, because you're driving around, they, they like your car or how to, yeah. does a guy need a convertible to get a, a girl or how does this all work? It seems that way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. I just thought I, I couldn't resist stopping by here. What are you driving here? Uh, 68 Dodge Cornette 500. Really? How long have you had it for? Uh, it's been in the family for about 25 years. Oh, really? And how are these girls related to you at all? Or are they just... My, my girlfriend and her mom. Oh, and her mom. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Guy, what are you doing back there? Um, I'm just playing. Just playing? What does this sign here mean here? It's got wood on the this thing here. Well, your, your dad put that on there? Yeah. Uh, uh, me and my brother's dad put it on there. Okay. What, what is sort of be like a gas pump kind of thing? Yeah, it's like a gas pump and then like there's, there's like a model of this. Of this car in here? Yeah, in there. I think I talked to your dad about this car. It even has a little bit of uh, moss growing on it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your name? Uh, Mercury. Your name's Mercury? Yeah. Cool. Wow, man. I like the way you're sitting in the back of this Ford Country Squire here. It's just like it uh, back in the 60s. It should be, huh? The, the seats here, they, they weren't uh, like ever originally here. Oh. It was just like flat. 
Oh, oh so your dad kind of put this in here, did he? Yeah, he did. Oh, nice. So what's the best part about your dad's car here? Um, probably just being able to sit back here. It's... And just hang out, yeah. huh? Yeah. What are you playing there? What kind of game you got going? Pokemon. Pokemon? Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for cru interviewing on Cruising on 7. I'm Bob. Okay. <laughs> hey, Dave, I just was talking to your son there. Uh, what was his name again? Mercury? This is Mercury. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're obviously a car guy. Yeah. So what do you got going on here with this wood uh, sort of gas pump going on? Well, we wanted to uh, make a bit of it. We thought if we can't have the greatest car in the world. We could have the greatest display in the world. So uh, I built this. This is, I don't know. You built that? Well... I put the thing together, it was kind of mangled up when we got it, and built the model of my car, and uh, the Woody Woodpecker thing is, the mud flaps have Woody Woodpecker on them as well, so it kind of ties it together. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us in Cruising on 7. Thanks a lot. So we got King Ralph here. He says that his friend dropped off this car, this truck, uh, for three days. It's been there a month, and now he brought it to a car show. Yeah, and uh, I phoned him and told him, uh, I'm taking your truck to the car show. I told his wife. I said, uh, I'm not phoning to ask for permission. I just phoned to let you know I'm doing it. <laughs> and she said, okay, okay, I'll tell him. Are the plates current and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. He's, He's actually got a pretty nice set of wheels on there. Yeah, I think they're 20 inch. It's oh. got a 351 uh, modified engine in it. Oh, really? Do you want to crack it? Let's have a look inside there, King. Well, I don't know. Do you go by King or do you go by Ralph? King Ralph. King Ralph. Okay, King Ralph. I Everybody like calls me that. <laughs> Everybody calls you that. I don't know if I can open it. Where's your kingdom, Ralph? Well, I live in the house I was born in. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. My, bro my, my brother actually lives in a house. Well, not quite, but pretty close. Oh, it's hard to find out how to get in there? Well, somebody knows. Oh, there you go. Partly. Well, if we don't get it open. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. Wow. So who popped that? Uh, it's a 350 in there? 351 clay, uh, modified. Who put that in there? He did. He did? Yeah, okay. he put a rack and pin in uh, steering and then... So how many days do you get to have the car in your driveway before it just becomes King Ralph? Well, I'm stopping there for a beer on the way home, so I might leave it there when I go there. <laughs> and then, how are you going to get home, King Ralph? I'll walk home. It's not <laughs> Actually, good. Home. That's good. That's because yeah. if you have oh, yeah, more, I'm having yeah. a beer, i got to yeah, walk. you got to walk home. That's yeah. good. That's good. Well, maybe he'll give you a ride home. Of course, he'll have a beer, too, yeah. so there'll be nobody to drive anybody home. <laughs> it's only a couple of miles. I mean blocks. <laughs> well, thank you, King Ralph. Okay, it's nice <laughs> meeting you. Nice meeting you. Take care. Okay, we'll see you. So, Monty, who have you got with you here now today? Uh, this is my son, Braden, uh, and my mother, Sharon. Hey, so you guys thought you'd come down to the car show. I see you've got a truck for sale here. What year is this? 1971. 1971. So, you don't want to keep it? No, it's just that I thought I'd let somebody else have a project, and it looks it's a decent one to start with. So. Yeah, we normally don't sell trucks and cars on, on the show, but this is kind of a cool one. What are you asking for it? Uh, I'm asking 1600 Oh, that's not bad. It's a half ton kind of thing? Yeah, it's a 1500 half ton. 1500 half ton. Yeah. And where did you find it? I actually found it on Kijiji. Oh, did you? Yeah. So you thought you'd bring it down to the car show? And yeah, yeah, just see if there's anybody interested in their start their own project, something new, something. Sounds good. Yeah. So what's your bum's first name? Sharon. So Sharon, did you drive down with him today? No, I have my car. <laughs> yeah, your car. Did you drive down with your dad? No, yes. I had it was a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so dad was left to drive by himself? Yeah. So you figure you might sell the car and then he'd have a ride home then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> or the truck, I should say. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, thanks for joining us on Cruising on 7, guys. You've got a lowrider here. This looks like an S10, if I'm not mistaken. Is uh, it? It's a GMC Sonoma, but yeah. Yeah, Sonoma. Same, same it, it came a little bit later, yeah. Yep. That's right. So tell us a little bit about this truck. It's a 1996 Sonoma. It's a fully custom frame, the C notch in the back, full air ride, uh, full four wheel independence. So you can do front, back, both sides. Oh, really? Air? Yep. Can you yep. fire it up? Can we see that? Sure. Let's try it. Let's try it. Man, I want to I see this air business. Oh, you got a remote starter on it? That's just, uh, yeah, this is the remote control for the air ride, so. Oh. Whoa! Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. cool. And then it lays frame, so it won't go anywhere <laughs> when it's down. Well, very cool. I like that. 
That was a lot of fun. Did you get enough there, Greg? <laughs> it's good. So how long have you had the truck? I've had this one for just about two years. So you, I noticed you're trying to sell it a little bit. Are you going to build another project? I've what? always got projects on the go. So I got another car that has air ride, and I'm building two more that have it. So. Oh, my God, Riley. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So what's the color on this truck? Uh, this is a Nissan Blue off it. So what is there any why you want Sonomas, or you just look for small trucks, or you don't really care? Whatever comes along. It doesn't really matter. I have a 66 Chevy half ton that's getting built next. So it's full-size pickup. So it doesn't matter as long as I can make it go low and scrape. Oh, I love that. Give it one more time. We've got to see this one more time here. Greg will, Greg will get this going a little bit here. It's just it's just kind of priceless, actually. <laughs> Whoa! Kind of leaning to the left. Yeah. Lean to the, Whoa! You can hear the frame smack. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, very so, cool. so, and then the back, back ends are cut out of it completely so that the frame and everything goes into the box oh, so that yeah. it can lay down this low uh, so pretty good pretty good you know a lot of guys they have to start their car up it looks sounds like you've got air a lot of air stored in there right? yeah i got a lot of air and i have the compressors running off two batteries all the time so i never have uh, never have an issue perfect well thanks for joining us on cruising on seven riley thank you Okay, so you've got yourself a 69 Camaro. Is it 69 or 68? 69. 69 Camaro. So tell us a little bit about this car, Kevin. Well, it's uh, totally pro touring custom. It's um, built from ground up. It's tube chassis, the 502 supercharged in it. Uh, it's got a Ford uh, nine inch in it and uh, got big 18 inch rims big disc brakes and you know built, so I, built I, to go i'm judging you probably uh, you know you're not in a generation when this car was you weren't standing on a street 16 years old when this car rolled by brand new you, you look like a younger guy yeah a couple years younger yeah. Anyway, yeah so why the camaro from back in that vintage i just always loved the old 69 camaros i always liked the body style and i just like custom stuff something nobody else has so is that right? Okay. Yep. Well, we, we won't talk about an offer, but some, somebody told me or whispered me a little <laughs> secret that there was a possibility and you're not going to do that. But it's amazing. People come along and they just say, hey, I'd like your car. <laughs> yeah, some people, you know, if they got money, they want to buy it. Have it done. <laughs> so what's the history of the car? How did, how did, the, how did um, they get to become like this? This one actually I bought, you know, three quarters the way it is. Uh, it was built in Southern California. Okay. And then it... Com uh, dealership out of Winnipeg bought it okay and then I bought it out of Winnipeg and brought it back here so how long have you had it for I've had it um, just a year and a half I guess oh somebody just wants to steal it away or steal it away already oh. yeah I don't know uh, yeah but you know so this is like a uh, I'm looking at the amount of chrome and uh, aluminum under there like there's a lot of even the even the hood <laughs> sort of <laughs> yeah yeah there's lots of hood brackets and things or yeah I did lots of the little detailing like this that wasn't done like Lots of custom uh, billet aluminum on it and yeah, chrome. Yeah, no kidding. So what, what did you say for horsepower you think you're getting out of it? It's just under the 700 horse. It's around the 680, 690 horse. Wow. Let's go look at this flag here. I mean, this brochure you've got on the front here. So what does this tell us a little bit? This is all uh, the specs and things yeah, here? It just tells, you know, what's in the engine. It's 502 supercharged uh, with billet specialty system on it, transmission. I love those. Cars. I love those seats. What are those seats? What are they? They're a Sparco uh, racing bucket. Those were actually in it when I bought it. Okay. And then I had uh, a guy out of Quipel called Gottfried Upholstery. He built the back seat to match. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Geez, he did a good job of that, he huh? He built it to match the front bucket. So. Oh, he's got, you've got all that nice stitching that you see in Audis and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Oh, geez, really? That was uh, in Capel? In Capel, yeah. Cool. Yeah, just in Capel, just before Indian Head there. It's guy that has a upholstery shop and does real good work there yeah geez it's all you know you find these guys just in these little niche places yeah. in there they're just doing and the best all the motor stuff like dan at vogue's uh automotive there he did you know does all my supercharge all that work and stuff so you so. got a oh you got a supercharge yeah, yeah that's right oh my god what a car to have huh? what are these wheels that you've got on here yeah those are billet specialty 18 inch uh rims just uh found them in a magazine and tried to pick something that would match the car real good and look good on it that deckling, that badging says 502. Is that that's that never was a Camaro badge? That's, no, it that's never your, came with a 502. But now it has a 502 big block in it. So. So you've got all that matched in there. What the color is it? It looks like jet black, but is yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, black with a blue pearl in it. Blue pearl. Yeah. Oh man, what a car! 
you know, <laughs> from where it came in factory to where it is today, yeah, quite a change. Yeah, yeah it's uh, built the way it should be now. Eh? <laughs> Fantastic yeah, car. Thanks, thanks for sharing on Cruising on 7. Thank you very much. Bob, you've got this lanyard here. What is this? This thing is a 1960 Plymouth Fury. It's a Canadian car. It's also a unibody for as large as it is. Unibody? Okay. Yeah, it's the first unibody that they Chrysler put out. And its only claim to fame is that it has an inch and a quarter of the highest fins ever put on a car. Well, I was just going to say is if you back up and somebody's st standing the wrong way, you could actually kind of yep. pierce them like a shark thing or something like that. But, uh, How long have you had this car? I've been working on it now for three years. I've been concentrating on the, the mechanics and all that before I do the the cosmetics because otherwise I could end up with a lawn ornament. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> you're get, getting the engine running. Well, I love the steering wheel. It's kind of like, it's not round, it's sort of yeah, square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. like, uh, how does that work when you're turning corners? Uh, it, it, it's kind of strange because <laughs> you're, you're either having your hands straight out or something like that, but all in all, I think they went, this was made around the, the World Fair time and they were looking for that. Jetson kind oh, of thing. Oh yeah, well you, you got, know. it looks like a guy yeah, like an air, airplane type of yeah, air yeah, uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, and controllers. Uh, uh, you even have uh, I see under the dash air. Uh, cool, yeah, they cool were thing. they were popular as aftermarket. They actually though, they came with a 45 record player. Oh really? As a as a factory unit thing. Do you have the record player with it? No, I don't. I uh, oh, no. Cool. Well, I couldn't let you get away. I saw you I taking off. I appreciate <laughs> it very much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care, man. I will enjoy your rest of the day. You bet. Brought to you by Majestic's Car Club. Join us for our annual Run to the Oasis Rod Run and Moose Jaw, August 26th to 28th, with door prizes, hotels, camping, and of course, special interest vehicles. There's something for everyone. For more information, visit MajesticsCarClub.com.